The following views and opinions are solely those of myself, Scooby, and or any co-hosts I might have with me from week to week, and in no way represent anyone officially associated with Upland. We're just players playing the game our way. What's up, everybody? I am Scooby. This is the Icon Variety Show um, episode. I've I've forgotten like 17 or so, and um, I don't have a, a title for this week. Uh, kind of just going off the cuff here. Big swaps. Legit swaps. Yeah, there you go. There's a topic. That is a thing now. You're right. Have you have you done that yet, Cam? How are you, by the way? I'm pretty good. Yourself? Uh, well, as I was talking to you a little bit pre-show, uh, I've been better. I stubbed my toe this morning on my way to the team meeting, and so that kind of just started off my day. And now it's uh, it's it's uh, it's turning colors. So we're gonna we're gonna keep an eye on that and see what happens and hope it's not a fracture. Other than that, having a good time. Played some Lara Croft Go with my kid. Uh. We we're, we're almost uh, we've almost made it through the maze of the what the spirit maze or something. The the game is set up in chapters and we're on like chapter four or five. It's fun. Interesting. Yeah, if, uh, if you ever play um Hitman Go, if played any of the Go games. I've, I've I'm aware of it to a degree, but I've not really played it. They're they're fascinating as a concept. They're just the games themselves are set up like. Board games, like all the computer graphics, all the things, and they're 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 like board games, and the spaces are like spot are like places on a board game, like moving like one spot to the next. But it's a puzzle to, I mean, in Hitman, it's a puzzle to assassinate people, and in Laura Croft, it's more of a traditional like puzzle to like get around environments, and you're killing snakes and lizards, and it's a lot of fun. Anyway, interesting. So it's not like a one v one type thing. No, no, yeah, no. It's just it's 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 they're all puzzles. They're um and they're very similar. Uh, the Hitman one and the Lara Croft one. So anyway, I recommend them. But yeah, back to legit swaps. Have you uh have you tried this out yet? I have. I as soon as I got the announcement, I went right into you know our uh, cafe chat with Upland and uh, found somebody who was looking to go, and I got at it within within minutes of it coming up. Right on. Yeah, um... Uh, I must it? say, though, I'm not nearly as deep in these as a lot of the community is. Um, I don't know how how deep you've, like, looked into it. I'm only getting the Essentials, which is their bare-bones pack. Mm-hmm. Um, my whole strategy with that is based off of, like, fan score per dollar per Upix that you're putting in. Mm-hmm. And I think that if you're going for a specific team or player, this is the best way to go. Yeah, I can see That's that. That's my opinion. I can see that. I was having a um a little bit of a conversation with uh Green Hornet um last night during uh Virtual Sports Club, which side note um I haven't uh put it on YouTube yet, so you wouldn't know, but you beat me, you motherfucker. So you continue on in the winners round. You are uh uh continuing on to the next um you know bracket, and I am being shoved into the losers bracket. It went into overtime, and you won with a field goal. I really wish I. I kind of feel bad for spoiling it for you now. Now that I think about it, I've been I there last night helping my wife with. I can't believe one of that year. That was the Patriots' year too. That year, man. Oh yeah. Well, because I mean, that's the year that the Patriots went undefeated in the real world. Oh, was it? Oh, well, that's awesome. But um, well, shit. I I kind of feel bad for spoiling it for now. I, I should have told you just to stay tuned and watch it. Not, but now I kind of ruined it. My bad. No, you're good. That's <laughs> I I am equally as excited, and I'm gonna go back and watch that anyway because I. Are you cutting out a little bit there? Anyway, still have more more to go. Am I coming through clearly? You were not. You are now. It seems. Okay, I, I was just saying that it's not a huge deal. I'm gonna watch it anyway, and um, you know we got obviously the winners bracket to go through, so I'm just as excited. Right I'm on. excited to be there. <laughs> and I'm not out yet. I'm not out yet. Although we did have an elimination last night. And um, anyway, like I said, just uh, watch it later. But yeah, um, so Legits uh, came up and um, I was basically saying like I, I was one of the people that thought that the uh, the initial sale of them was going to be the only sale. Um, you know, I, I don't I'm not as upset as a lot of players got about uh, them having uh, multiple sales after. Um but in that I thought the first one was the only one, like, I, I'm not getting it anymore. I, I got a few packs. I'm, I'm happy with what I got. I'm 
Uh, I got a few, you know, I got several number ones, just, you know, by chance, um, like you do. So, uh, I'm comfortable just waiting until we can sell them for at least Upix, um, if not actual fiat. Fair enough. Um, won't start doing trades with you now, but are you against trading at the moment, or are you, what are you doing with yours? Uh, honestly, I don't know enough about it to, to, to trade. I mean, you know, you know me. I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a sports guy. I'm not really a football guy. So, um, I think it's great that it's there for the people that do understand this. Um, I, I look back at my old Pokemon days. You know, I remember having Pokemon cards, trading them, getting the best collection and whatnot. And so, like, I totally get how that is a fantastic element and implementation. Um, but it really only works if you have a, uh, you know, if you got a strategy. And um, as far as that's concerned, I don't really have a strategy. I'm like I said, I'm just waiting until there's a time that I can like just like take the market price. That's fair, especially if you're not going to go any deeper on these. There's not necessarily a whole lot of incentive. Um, if you do want, I mean, actually, you know what? I'm going to do you the favor anyway. I'm going to take a look at one of your properties later so I can see what you got, make suggestions, uh-huh. do what you, what you will. But um, no, this has been really interesting in that. Um, I am a huge football fan. I do fantasy every year and have for over a decade now. I have football cards. I flip football cards. This is unique in that Upland has created a fandom uh, behind the NFL PA that is not in step with the rest of what NFL fandom has been forever. Um, Traditionally, if you're a fantasy football fan or if you're a card collector, you only go for several positions, mainly offensive players. There's some outliers in that, but basically you only go for a few positions that matter. Upland has created a system in which the punter, essentially one of the least important people, matters almost as much as the quarterback, at least on a game scale. Mm-hmm. And not only that, you also have a large segment that might shrink as we get more NFL fans coming in through the advertisement, but we have a large segment of the community that's not only not not only ignorant to football or not aware of football in that way, but some of them don't even care. It's just this is a new collectible. It's a new game, and they're going to go for the game of it, figure out the game. They don't care about the face. So mm-hmm. it's really – it's created this weird space where what I know about football, like it matters, but it's not nearly as important as people think. I'll tell you what I have, but one thing I'm noticing is this, that, um, I mean, there's a lot of people, I mean, Upland's such an international game, football is uniquely American, but I've noticed that there's a lot of users uh, uh, in the main Upland server that have, like, taken this and, like, like, like well, shit, yeah, I'm gonna learn football. They've been following along with it, and know God Sassa is doing that thing, like, like that weekly uh, uh, commentary on it, and that's something I did not expect to see happen, but, like, it, it really picked up. I... You're breaking up again. We're losing Cam. The NFL, and that's what it was. So, that no, you're right. That's been really cool. And honestly, good it. on those. Not here? Sorry. Yeah, I know. You're coming, you're coming through now, but, uh, but only within like, the last two sentences. Basically, <laughs> um... It's cool that Upland has somehow created NFL fans or has created NFL interest. I thought that the players that had the interest would flock to these. I didn't think it would generate it. Mm-hmm. Let me and ask you this. Also, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just also going to say, like, honestly, good on a lot of these people for the, to me that it seems like a very daunting project because the legits are daunting on their own. I could not imagine jumping into a sports league where you have people with literally decades of experience in this area ahead of you, and you're just diving in head first. I, it's really cool to see. Mm-hmm. No, absolutely. Um, and uh, I think that there are some that are just like me that are just like, they're not even trying to learn the strategy of it. They're just saying, well, I bought in at this at, at X. Um, I think that Y is going to be larger. Um, but there's going to be just as many that are going to try and really hustle and play the game. And yeah, I'm with you. I think that's great. Uh, but let me ask you, um, the fantasy score thing, the, what, is it the fan score, right? The fan score, is that what they're calling it? Yes. Okay, all right. So, number one, when do you think that that is reasonable to expect to actually have like any, any sort of in-game 
like implementation and two do you think that's enough to give uh the upland legits the I'm trying to think of the word value for lack of a better word um that that because you heard recently that the NFL, not the NFLPA, but the NFL, it did something with NFTs, made some sort of agreement, yeah? Yes. I don't uh, know much in detail, but yeah. I am, and it seems, I, I think it's just exactly like what the Top Shots stuff is. But um, a lot of people have pointed out, because, you know, originally there were naysayers that it was the NFLPA, not the NFL, right? And yep. now we have the NFL actually doing something. Do you think the fan score is going to be enough to kind of provide that value and what do you think is going to happen so i think if it were the fan score alone absolutely not um it's i'm still not 100 percent sure but based on everything coming together i could see it being something at least resembling complete um because you have obviously uh you have your fan score for your team and then you have your fan score for certain players um and that's especially as the years go on and players get traded. I'm actually in a unique position myself right now where I have a player who's on um, New England since it's the NFLPA. He's not on the Patriots. He's on New England. Um, he's on New England for 2021, but he was not. He was in Baltimore for 20, uh, 2020. I'm developing my team entirely for New England, but he is a good player, and I happen to pick him up. So I'm going for picking up his Baltimore, not increasing my New England fan score, but hoping that my New England fan score in tandem with getting a head start where I'll have a bunch of him before people have access to him in 2021 will help me. Um, And I think that you're going to run into a lot of unique situations like that because there's a billion reasons to be a fan of any team and any player. And also just maybe opportunity based off who you've gotten. Um, That creates a lot. and then that tied in with the 20 with it tying into the next season in whether or not you're going to be able to get a memento or what your odds are for getting a memento. Plus you got the replicas that we don't necessarily know a whole lot about yet, but that we know is going to be a lesser memento, if you will, or a Mm -hmm. memento with less value. Um, So, I mean, I think there's enough there and especially if they expand a little bit that we do have something, but the score alone is not enough. That's fair. That's fair. What do you think about the uh, 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 about um, the truth behind, like, not the truth, but the issue there with the NFL not being with Upland and being with some something else? Do you think that that is going to lower the value of the Legits long time, long term? And that, I mean, previously it was the NFLPA and nothing, and now it's the NFLPA and the NFL doing different projects. I mean, I, I, I think it's tough to say that it would have no impact. I think that it could technically damper the value, but I don't think it'll ruin it or even bring it down significantly. Um, my guess is whatever that is, is obviously more NFL um, direct. Like it's like, it, that is what the product is. It's not this monopoly metaverse whole thing. So I don't know that they're one in one. Um, I think that the NFL, it's probably a more lucrative deal for the NFL. So that's why they went with that versus going with an upland and the, the NFL PA being its separate entity. Hey, listen, you guys can eat too. Go ahead. Take your, your project. Mm-hmm. I don't know. So I don't know. I, I think it'll definitely suck up some. I, I don't think that it'll ruin or even significantly affect it though. That's fair. And I, I, I largely agree. No, I think that um, as far as what the NFL decided to do, I think that they went with the safe project. They went with the, dig- the, the the digital version of the trading cards that everyone knows is you know basically a stable economy and market. Um, whereas with Upland, it, you know that's a metaverse; it's a whole universe, like you're saying. And um, I think the, you're right; the NFLPA being that kind of just more uh, I don't want to say loose, but yeah, open with that kind of yeah, you know, it's more of a, a, a licensing thing, right? So honestly. Honestly, from the NFL's perspective, um, they have to take the card, right? They have to. Yeah. Because they're not going to explain to their audience what the hell is this. No, you're right. That's the same. But then to let the NFL PA, let them go and do their own thing, that's a win-win. Either the NFL PA bets on this thing and it looks and it comes out horribly. Now you, the NFL PA and the players, when they go to bargain, look stupid and they don't, they don't make smart choices. So the NFL has that leverage against them or a part of their association won. 
it's a win-win for them. Yeah. Okay. That's fair too. Yeah. Absolutely. Um. So for, uh, let me go back to something you said about the about the fan score uh, with the with the teams. So all right. So you're saying that like you've got a uh, John on team you know on on team blue for 2020, but he's on team red for 2021. You're saying it's gonna boost both John's score and Team Blues by having that, even though now he's on Team Red. So, t- so team, if he's on Team Red in 2021, John in 2020, John's card in 2020 does not affect Team Red's score. Right. But the Team Red score and the fact that John is now on Team Red for 2021 can work together for 2021. I have John in 2020 where he's over here i already have a bunch of them coming into the 2021 season okay and that so like you take so instead of i wanted to go all patriots or all new england but then when i saw that opportunity i was like huh because everybody's going to have whoever's been on the team but how many people are going to be fans of both baltimore mm-hmm. and new england or is going to be going for that player in that way fair enough now we don't we don't currently have 2021 uh legits do we no, I, we do not. So okay, that's okay. literally. So I'm literally <laughs> betting on waiting on that, and I kind of have to though, to be honest, because I'm not going deep on these. I'm gonna buy a mm-hmm. pack or two a week of the essentials. Uh, I'm gonna see how that goes, or actually, to be completely fair, we're gonna see really where I sit after this uh, this first little contest. I guess the leaderboard will show a top fifty. If I'm not in the top fifty, I'm not going deep enough to catch up. I'm not gonna try it. I'm not. Um, not to say I'm not going to interact with them, but I'm going to stop trying to build the team score or anything like that because if I can't compete now, I'm not going to go deeper. I'm not going to compete later in that way. I'm going to have to change up how I play it. Gotcha. Now, what is this contest? <laughs> so it's basically there's uh, 32 teams, and the goal is to have the top be in the top 10 fan score for whatever team. So if you, I'm going for New England, I'm hoping that I fall within the top 10 of that. And if you do, you get a block explorer. And this is for the, like, season? This is for this week. This is just, this is, like, for what cards we have now. Yeah. It's just this, this quick little challenge to basically see who can trade what to develop their fan score between now and Friday. Okay, Perhaps so, wait, I, so do, we, do we currently have a fan score? So we don't have one that displays on our thing, but we do have a um, within their announcements, and I can actually drop it in chat or I can show you where. But they have a. Um, yeah, let, me, let, me, let me see this. Yeah, let me pull it up. There's an Excel file that you can plug in your players. Um, admittedly, of course, in Upland fashion, the Excel file is broken for some teams. <laughs> Got a lot. Um, so it's it'll show you if you put in this player, this jersey, and then also you have to know whether or not this player it well actually never mind. Do you know about the levels of player? Do you mean like for mementos? Okay, so actually before the mementos, you have every player is assigned either starter, contributor, or there's like a bunch of there's a few there's several levels of which will get you more or less fan score. Um that is actually it's being calculated on this as well um so if you have a jersey for one team and a jersey for another team they're not necessarily the same because this player could be a starter whereas this guy's only a contributor all right hold on i'm pulling up my upland now all right i've apparently yeah. been i've been apparently asleep for gonna, the last it also do, yeah it also does not say that on your card which is convenient um but it it How do you tell them? input so when you input it into the Excel sheet, it'll show you what your player is worth, and then that'll break down the points. Will tell you whether or not he was a contributor, starter, or what have you. Uh, there's also some lists floating around that have all this. Um, but basically, you input your players, you put the team that you want this to be calculating, and then it'll give you a total fan score for that team. Unless you're one of the broken teams, then you gotta. It'll give you at least the points for each player, and then you gotta go add those. Sorry, my cat is currently trying to to like cozy up next to my bad foot, and I'm like, no, don't do that. Um, so this is okay. So this is like, I love it. This is like Matrix high hackery. Like you gotta put in the code and work your way around and find the secret list. <laughs> I love it. 
<laughs> oh, yeah, so like, this isn't what they wanted it to have, be, but it's so much fun. <laughs> and then you have the whole mechanic, which I je- I didn't know about this until literally this week with the swapping. Um, you have away jerseys and caps, which are instead I of being that. a, I didn't I. I didn't know that there was a difference. I saw it. I didn't realize that that became a one of six versus a one of mm-hmm. whatever. One of the first things I noticed when I started opening them up was, hey, how come some of these are different colors? And how come all the different colored ones are six or lower? Do you want to know another cute Upland thing? What's um, that? They're away and home jersey colors are, are backwards. The home no. team typically has the dark jersey. The away team typically has the light jersey. Technically, kn- within technically, you can you can choose as the home team, but that's mm-hmm. always how it's done. Okay, Cam, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for saying that because I've been playing virtual sports club, as you know, and I've been getting confused. So I don't know if that's something where the NFL owns enough rights to it, where we're like, you know what, let's let's go ahead and just reverse it. Let's no, let's do that um, I have a better, I have a, I have a better suggestion. I have a better suggestion. Upland being Upland. Upland is European, and European is soccer, and in soccer, white is home. Okay, that that's that, that, fair. To me, that's um, Occam's razor. That's the easiest. The so, somewhere along the way, it was someone's job to separate them out, and they went, "Oh, that's how it works in soccer. That's probably how it works in every sport." I have no idea if I'm right. I'm probably wrong. Um, but that's my that's that's what I would thought. Well, and to be fair, that's what I thought it was. I had to be corrected because when we first started season two of Virtual Sports Club with football, I thought white was home because I've I've never played football. I've only played soccer. Well, I just I got to imagine, and lest I'm mistaken, there's not a liaison between Upland and the NFL PA to go. Wait a minute, wait a minute, just something's wrong. Something's you think? Wrong. But this is a. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I mean, hold on. I, I, yeah. I we'll find out. We'll yeah. find out. You know how we're gonna find out? How? Season 2021. Oh, uh, you it, can't reverse it back, can you? Well, I guess then you made a bunch of error cards, and those are now more. Uh, yeah, I guess you can. Yeah, they just do it by season. This is also the Genesis season. You you, you get one mulligan. Everybody knows that. Okay. And like you said, it just makes them more valuable. That actually works out. If they if they spin it right with PR, it works out in their favor. If Upland was good at PR, they'd have a lot less issues. Well, okay, that's fair. But hey, they got eighteen million dollars in Series A fundraising. Maybe they'll be able to get some better people. Honestly, in that company that they teamed up with, um, I can't remember off the top of my head, but they've been involved in some pretty serious projects. No kidding. Yeah, no. It uh um that was a good little I read through that little article they put out there. But, and I mean to be fair, of course they're gonna spin it in a very positive way, but I have to admit from from point A that was it that was, you know, just like Torch buddy, c- come on, come on. So I, just so you know, real quick, I dropped it in the podcast chat. Go to that announcement and then go to the very bottom. It'll bring up a uh, Google Doc sheet and it'll walk you through. It's honestly, gotcha. it, it's not the best, but supposedly we'll have, like, after this little challenge, we won't have to deal with this anyway. All right, I got it there. I'll save it for after we're done here. But hold on, buddy, buddy. I know, I can't, I can't play with you right now. I'm sorry. Anyway. Um. No, uh, um. But this, well, I forgot what I was saying. It doesn't matter. Um, Season twenty twenty one will will uh, uh be the difference there because if they if they decide to to change it back, then that'll be good. But um, oh, series A, you were talking about the fu- uh, fundraising or whatever. Oh yeah, no, I mean they they uh oh right because they 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 started just this just like less than two years ago, and then it reached just massive expansive growth, and yeah, I mean things have been pushed to the side. Um, but we're starting to see some, you know, some functionality. It's mostly geared towards these legits that are varying in degree, but we got to decorate our houses and we get to keep those things. We got our legits and we're getting, hell, we're getting more legits. In fact, some people are upset about how many legits we're getting, you could argue. (laughs) So a couple things I think that, and I kind of said this in uh, general before, but, um, I think that a lot of us kind of suffer from upland PTSD, where every <laughs> everything that could even be a perceived misstep at this point is now a mountain because we've just mm-hmm. dealt with nothing but mountains. And I got to be honest, 
since probably right before New Orleans and then obviously New Orleans. No, it has not been perfect. I think upland has been in a much better direction, honestly, in the last month or two. 100%. Or wherever that timeline falls. 100% agree with you. And you're absolutely right. And I've actually seen a little bit in the general uh, uh, chat sometimes, um, a, a little bit of like, you know, I don't know if I, don't know if I want to call it gatekeeping, but a little bit of, you weren't here for the Brooklyn burn. <laughs> Like people being like, I don't, I don't trust Upland. Like, oh, this is gonna be bad again. And it's just like, but, but take a breath. Don't put foot on your own thing. Like, why are you still here? Like, yeah, why but, they don't, yeah. don't, don't shove the new player away, if, or yeah. just go away if you're gonna do that. People like to, but people, people like to feel that, feel that way. And I, I kind of get that. But that's where it's like, I mean, yeah, I was here for it too. But like, you know, that, that's Time life. To slash our gatekeeping. Yeah. But um, um no. I think even though even if you were the most cynical person that in think that Upland is going to topple, with that fundraiser or that Series A and mm-hmm. and everything that's going on right now, I personally and I'm not obviously in a position to make this statement because I work a day job, but I personally think that this is uh bought two to three years minimally before you could even see like a real issue where I go, All right, maybe I should sell out. I think that, I, yeah. that that is a certain amount of life that you'd have to admit that Upland's not going anywhere for the next year or two minimally. No, I agree with you. One of the things that gives me the most uh, uh, confidence in their financial, um, I don't want to say liquidity, because frankly, liquidity is a little bit too, too frank, but like security, I guess. Anyway, is that they have on their roadmap to, uh, to, release soon um an account liquidation service like offering to like get you a situation to cash out and that's something you don't get in i mean i can't think of any other any other nft project that's like oh you want to just straight up cash out fiat here you go well because they're going to give it to you back at what you paid and that, that's a stock buyback in my I, that's smart if you you don't like it okay we'll buy our we'll buy our shares back Exactly. No, I, absolutely. And that's how you prevent dead accounts. No, I I, I think Upland's got a bright, bright future. No, the missteps, yeah, they've happened. Um, but my thing, it, especially recently, I've tried to try to cool down. Um, look, find me another project that looks like this. Yeah, yeah you got a lot of successful <clears throat> NFT projects, but none with this user interface. And that's everything. Now, you, speaking of successful NFT projects, I gotta ask: Have you heard about the Quentin Tarantino secret uh, NFT auctions? I have not actually. I um, I have found myself in a spot where, as much as there's nothing but NFT swirling around us, I really have blinders on at the moment. Right on. No, I I actually uh, I just happened to come across it a couple of times and eventually looked into it and went, "Holy shit!" Because um, yeah, you're right. NFTs everywhere everywhere but i really like quentin tarantino and so i i looked at this uh, out of curiosity to see what 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 price it was fetching more than anything else like all right what's a quentin tarantino going for you know what i'm saying yep. but but it's way more interesting than just that um sorry again my cat wants so much attention god um so it's a secret nft all right so they've got secret blockchains now where um what he was selling was a handwritten script of Pulp Fiction and uh, scenes that like have never been seen before, never released and shit. And on this blockchain, like only the owner is able to access the file. So it really is, you know, everyone always complains about how, wh- how why is that worth anything? I can just go on YouTube or I can just get, find it here on the blockchain and grab it. But this is like a no, only the person who owns it can get it. What do you think of that? That's really interesting, and I kind of like that. And I mean, that's this is where this is the thing that I'm finally enjoying about this is the utility. Mm-hmm. It, and and that's that's where we're gonna start to see some of the coolest stuff. I don't I, the coolest stuff's not even here yet. Mm-hmm. No, I agree. Now, here's what I love about that. Okay, because here's what got me thinking about that. Because I mean, like I said, I'm a huge Quentin Tarantino fan, and I like to sometimes imagine like, all right. What if I would? What if I had? What if I had all the money in the world, right? Because you know who doesn't imagine that, right? Like, let's say I got that, and let's say that they 
got the interoperability worked out between the blockchains, between that and the NFT portal with Upland. And I could have a house party in Upland showing that that private content. Just like having people coming over to watch a home video in real life. I, that's really interesting. And I think that's a part of the Series A that a lot of people missed. Um, is that that's not just, a, you know, somebody with or a company that's used to NFTs. That's a company that sees that Upland isn't just doing NFTs. It's bringing it all together. Mm-hmm. And that, that Upland is going to be, like you said, it's going to be the place you go for NFTs. Yeah, I think absolutely. I think it's, I mean, I don't think it's going to be the only hub um, because the nature of the, of the metaverse, I think, is that there is going to be an, an interconnected amount of mega hubs. Kind of like, I mean, there's not one big grocery store. There's a few because you got better places for better things. But um, I think that Upland is going to be one of the big ones. Yep. And then obviously each project is going to have its own incent- in, like incentives as to be here versus over there. Mm-hmm. But and that's another another thing with the, you know these NFTs finally coming in. Obviously, we don't have other chains coming into the game really yet. But these people do not understand. Like, if you're not dealing, especially in Ethereum NFTs, which I've kind of stayed out of. Oh God, that right? Is that space is so rife with gas fees that like it, oh. a lot of people just don't quite understand what Upland or other metaverses. If you can wrap it in your thing, create your side chain. Mm-hmm. Your whatever ledger and make it so that you can move this around and until you cash out of upland with it you're not getting charged that fee mm-hmm. why like and then like people are like well like why would i not just take it right back out of upland why would you why would mm-hmm. you take it out of upland <laughs> and you're absolutely right and that's where it's like and that's because because you're right those kinds of fees are fine when you're talking about something like account liquidation it's a no-brainer but when you're talking about every time you're buying a property bullshit Absolutely, like, <laughs> yeah, and God, you're right. I, I, anytime, like, I've waited six months sometimes to like try and cash out of certain like coins and stuff, just because like, nope, nope, I'm not paying those fees. Yeah, and I mean, like I said, I'm not really invested in the Ethereum side of things because, as I've as it's been explained to me, you kind of, Ethereum's kind of gold to wax is silver. I like silver in the real world because I don't I don't deal with things that hmm. big, so that's fine with me. Ethereum is gold to wax is silver. Now that's interesting. I like that. That's a uh, um like uh, I've heard the the reference of uh, I've heard Bitcoin being gold and Litecoin isn't wasn't was originally intended to be the Bitcoin silver, and that was one reason that I actually got it a lot of traction going uh starting off. Um, but no, yeah, Ethereum has, I used to be really, really bullish on it, and I'm still, like, philosophically bullish on it, because they do want to move from proof of work to proof of stake, which would do, which would basically do away with these horrendous gas fees, um, but that's, like, years away, if I understand correctly, so, yeah, I'm with you, I just stay away from it as much as I can. Yeah, I, and I mean, I've seen some projects go off in that, but also I've seen some projects go off in Wax, and Wax yeah. is, it, oh. it was a weird, it was a weird transition. Um, I, I, I honestly think it was more of my, like, I don't know, there's just, there's this weird, like, I can't describe it, like this weird, like, curtain in front of Wax, and it's like, it's like fake, like, you walk right through it, like, it's easy once you get in, but mm-hmm. like, for some reason, like, there's this, like, fake barrier where it's like, oh, how do I do this? You get in and it's kind of self-evident. You sign in with your Google. <laughs> I know, and I, I, I don't know what the delay was for me, but I was just like, this is... Me too. I, I think I think coming from a crypto space and like especially so speculative and like investing mm-hmm. previously, I haven't been comfortable investing like that since 2017 when I was putting in three, four hours of research a day. I assumed that to get into this would be similar, and I realized that it's just not. Like you can, you can jump mm-hmm. in and out of whack I, as freely as you want. Yeah, the only problem used to be kind of well. I mean, it still is for some people getting wax. Um, buying it is still a hassle in some ways. Now, it just got recently, very recently, a whole lot easier for me. I am very happy to say. So, um, I don't know if you know, but I have that. Uh, uh, was it? I think it's Crypto.com uh, card. Um, hold on a sec. 
I have that card, but I never set up an account and they always bitch at me to set up an account. So like, I don't use it yet. I, 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 I'm viscerally aware of the project. Right on. Yeah, no, um, it's, uh, I use it, um, for a couple of things and, uh, anyway, recently they allowed you to start buying wax, right? And so oh, I bought, clutch. what? That's clutch. I bought, so, well, so at first I bought five bucks. I, I always do a test. Cause I'm like, wait a minute, you let me buy it. Can I take it? Can I, can I actually have it? And at first, no, it was, you could just buy it and sell it on the platform. And I was like, ah, well, son of a bitch. Right. But so I left it there. Right. And, uh, the other day I went to test, I went to try it out again and it let me withdraw it. And I'm like, oh shit, I can just buy it and withdraw it now. It's, it's, I I got it. I found, I found the key. (laughs) That's Crypto, awesome. Crypto.com, people, that's the answer. If you're in America and you want to buy wax, you just, just want to buy wax, fuck Simplex, fuck buying US, uh, a tether on, on QCoin and trading it in and paying the gas fees. No, go to Crypto.com, set up your account, and just buy it. Wow. I, I mean, not to say that, I mean, that, that was one, that's a weird one. I mean, obviously people speculate on wax, but that's not like one of the main speculating currencies. So like, yeah. I'm glad to see that it's not just a market there. I couldn't believe it. In all seriousness, I wasn't expecting it. Um, uh, I like didn't believe it until I I checked my my wallet, my wallet, and I was like, yeah, it withdrew, and I'm like, okay, I guess Crypto.com was like that's the exchange. It's like, yeah, all right, we'll put it on. No, that's that's awesome, and I found I have found just because I'm I'm not buying all that much, and I've flipped things, etc. Um. Wax is a weird situation where unless you're an aggressive buyer, I feel like once you're in, you're kind of in and it doesn't really, you don't need the opportunity to really get a whole lot more because like you could then flip it into something else and it just seems perpetual. I, I can't explain it. Like wax is perpetual. Yeah. Well, there, and there's just, there's a lot of really good projects. And I think that Atomic Hub is set up in such a way that it's very beneficial for the whole ecosystem. No, Atomic Hub's great. I, like I said, from the time I got in, it took me less than a day to feel fairly confident with moving around. Yep. No, I, I yeah. I was initially a little apprehensive about the whole Google sign-on thing because, again, coming from a crypto background, I'm like, well, there's no way I'm getting my private keys if I'm signing on through Google. And, uh... True, true enough, but there is a way that, there is a way you can get them, and you can import and export the wallets, and there's Anchor and everything, and well, I do still just use the cloud wallet. I, I do that because of the knowledge that if I wanted to move to a cold wallet proper, I could. Yeah, and that's – so I am really I – ha, I don't have enough in Wax where I feel any type of way. If I lost my stuff, I'd be upset. But I, I'm not nearly invested enough where I'm like I'm going to go to a cold wallet or anything like that. It's not like mm-hmm. Bitcoin – to me it's a utility to me like i don't i don't speculate on it i I like its low price i think the community likes its low price and Mm -hmm. i don't really see like it it, it's trading for 50 cents right now is it that high okay yeah yeah i I actually just cashed out about 150 bucks worth because i was just like shit i mean (laughs) but um if i were to become a serious wax person i would probably consider going another way with it but I'm very comfortable keeping a few hundred bucks, even a few thousand dollars within the cloud wallet with no problem. Yeah. Yeah. I took it also as one of those, one of those, it's, it's one of those where the system is obviously working because if it wasn't, we'd be hearing about it. It's wax is also meant to be fluid in a different way. Like the whole way the DAP system works and everything, like it's all meant to be interconnected. Like to cloud wallet is just to handcuff yourself. I mean, yeah. to hard, hard wallet it. Yeah. Now, I will say, I will say, to be fair, I would argue actually that the uh, the vulnerability there is not the cloud wallet, but is in fact your Google account. A hundred percent. I actually That's considered. Yeah. I considered separating and getting a whole other Google account for that, but that I don't mm-hmm. know. I hadn't yeah. gone that route, so. Exactly. Yeah, that that's where that I I will admit it is a vulnerability and, and a central point of failure in that it, it you have that step there with your with your sign on with whatever single sign on you're using. But you, you take that with any single sign on. No, 100%. So, um yeah, no, yeah. Um, the space is really interesting right now and I'm really I'm in this nice place where I can kind of I can talk about stuff. I can get mad at stuff, but I can breathe. It's really nice. 
Right on. So, um, alright. Upland. We have, uh, do we have any new cities on the horizon? Anything announced or speculated? I mean, the speculation depends on who you ask, I guess. There's no major speculation to anything specific. Um, I would say at least the majority of people believe we're not getting anything until 2022. Um, there is a segment that believes we will get uh, some, it, one more city before this year's over. And the biggest targets I've heard, and again, this is just people's opinions. It's been really Miami, Vegas, some of the bigger draws that are also football cities. And that's what that's OK. So there were because. How many numbers have we seen thrown around? Eight, twenty, thirty. I, it's like it's honestly like they're calling a fucking football play. So, but I feel like eight was the the smallest number, and we have now gotten all eight, right? Yes, and the eight was very. And I I still think you could argue that there's a better setup, but that's another uh, topic. I think that the eight. You get into a weird spot where if you're not at eight anymore, the cities are no longer evenly distributed through teams, and now what? But the way they have it now, it's you do have the advantage to I I think there's at least a perceived advantage to the home teams of these stadiums, but it works out so that most of the league is fairly represented in an equal way. What if they did another dual city release? I think they have to. I feel like they might have to at this point. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe you could break them away and it doesn't really matter. I don't know. No. I think that's a community perception type thing. For the 2021 legits, what do you think the hard deadline is going to be? We still think it's just like the playoffs? I, I, that is my opinion. Actually, my opinion is that we will have one or two weeks before the playoffs because you can't afford to mess up the playoffs. You got to work out the kinks. Oh, okay. Okay, so you're thinking that, they, that they, they'd be best off uh, doing at least a so trial that, run. Yeah, I think having these and having these we, that in a known working space by the playoffs is the deadline. Like that, and... I think that is the cap. Playoffs is January? Uh, basically, yeah. Hmm. That would be the new year then. So, okay. If they timed the new... Yeah, see, I can't, I can't see doing... I can't see planning for a new release and planning for this kind of implementation. Here's something nobody's saying, and I, I, I think that we might not see a new city until after the Super Bowl. That's in February, right? That it's in February, which is an upland time three years from now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> shit, right? But, but um, I I just I think that they have a current working model with their eight cities. I think that yeah. it's gonna make make sense. We already have too much to buy in front of us. There's plenty to mint. Yeah, and I and especially with the size of the mints in in Nashville, that was meant to buy some time. Yeah. Now. Yeah, I I gotta think there's there there's plenty to mint. I mean, just look at the size of the properties between Nashville and KC, especially because nobody most of KC is there to be minted. Like you can I, still mint Shoal Creek. How'd you do in um, Nashville? Oh my God! I literally uh, I've been talking nothing but crap about Nashville. I went to Nashville with the sole intent of buying three named properties to fill out my uh, initial collection and leave. I did what everyone does. Well, you know, I tried the downtown area and this was the first time where everybody else messed up and I was able to mint through it. I got into a small pocket where I caught 10, um, 10 of the little guys, like six to eight K mints. And then I had an FSA buyer who got me another two. I flipped all of those between 50 and 60 K. Well, I flipped nine of them for 50 to 60 K. Um, and then I'm holding on to three now. I feel like those were pay- those are already paid for, and then some. I'm gonna wait for the city release on those. Um, I have my name props. I'm buying up some of those weird smaller properties that are under 10k. I now have 50 properties in Nashville. I'm waiting on a serious collection drop for downtown. I am in an undeservably good spot because my shit didn't lag for like a five minute period where everyone else did. And I don't know if you heard, but legit's got dropped on people during the city release. Yeah, so, I did hear. Yep, so I, that happened to me 10 minutes after I was done with the my main minting. and Oh, and you yeah. have to open those because you can't get to the game without it. 
So if anybody yep. would, if so anybody that went heavy into legits got a real lat. Oh man! Did you know TM? Yeah. Oh shit. TM um, was how- was probably wrecked the hardest. He invested in Nash in in liquidity for Nashville. He invested heavy in legits. And he was one of the people where we were trying to mint downtown, Music Row, and all the important stuff got hit with legits. That's that's rough. So his perspective, and I feel deservedly so, I invested twice as hard to get screwed twice as hard, and that sucks. Yeah. Yeah, that does suck. Damn. He seems, I, to, um... he seems to have a good good spirit about it overall, but man, I... I would be upset, and I yeah. don't know how Upland dropped the ball on that. I don't think that's really been explained. Um, I mean, me, that, like, that just sounds like poor planning. It's just, like, that was one of those weird ones where, like, yeah, like, Nashville's open wasn't perfect with the delay, and there was a little bit of, like, eh. But <clears throat> outside of that, like, it would have been all right. And, like, you, you dropped the ball, but you didn't even have to pick it up. Like, you picked up the ball to drop it. Like, just don't do the legits on the same day as a city release, and there you go. Yep. That Okay, so that that sounds like a situation where they were the team that was responsible for the legit release and the team that was responsible for the city release for different yep. teams and weren't talking. That's, that's my best guess, and if it's anything else, I, I mean, I don't know that that's appropriate, but anything besides that, I would say, is very inappropriate. Yeah, and I mean that's not not that that's okay, but that is that that's something that you can un, you could see happening. That's the kind of miscommun that's the kind of miscommunication that would happen. And all I can say from that is I hope that they reach out and do what they can to you know kind of uh, compensate a little bit. Um, but uh, mostly just hope that they learn from it. That's all yeah, we can like really it, do. I, and you know what? Um, I, I know this is very. Uh very skewed coming from I won on this side of it, but I feel like this is just one of those situations where I'm happy I won and I, I'm I, I so I, I'm sorry to see that some people were affected negatively. Um if you've been around long enough, I think you've just been on both sides of it at this point. Yep. That's exactly my feeling on it. If you've been around long enough, you've been on both sides. This is uh, you know, they they say they want Upland to imitate one to one with life as close as possible, and as far as that goes, like yeah, they do a damn good job. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Upland's rolling the dice. Oh yeah, I, I lost in uh, Santa Clara. I lost in KC. Um, mm-hmm. you move on, and I I hit a win. I'm very happy. And mm-hmm. t- truth be told, I mean a few hundred k. Like I I'm very happy with that because I didn't expect to get that. There are people who are buying my who bought those off me, and they're going to sell those for stupid prices if uh, downtown is a rare enough collection. Absolutely, and good for them. I, I I don't play the speculation game with those for the most part. I knew that mm. getting them and I could flip them right away. No one saw Greek Town coming. No yeah. one. And then you then you had the opposite side. You got Magmile. You got oh Urban god, Street. and then got Magmile. The key Magmile is the crown jewel of assum- of, of making assumptions in Upland. Like you can't make any assumptions about collections since Magmile. Millions of upics were spent on individual properties, and then when they draw the lines for the thing that didn't even become a collection, you have three properties in Magmile. It's oh, it was it was. It's just one of those things where it was so tragic and awful. It was almost beautiful. <laughs> just uh, it was like if 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 they made a movie about Upland, right? That would be the part where the music crescendos and it goes into a slow montage of people watching the screen and their faces falling. I was literally in a, a oddly fortunate, unfortunate position, and as to Chicago, I didn't have the liquidity to go play mm-hmm. that game in Magmile. So, but. I got to watch everybody else do it and learn I'm not going to play that game. Yeah. So I, I, I will not buy secondary on collections until release. Yeah. No, so I mean I I, I get that. I tried for Greek Town because when when that when Chicago was releasing, uh we we thought that well, I uh, looked at Greek Town and looked at and mistook inhabitants for properties. Um uh well rather, I, I didn't mistake it, but I didn't realize that they were all apartments. And so I thought that there was going to be like four or five hundred, um, but there ended up only being like 70 or 80 in real life and only like 35 in the game. So our target fell through real fast. And I just thought um, like uh, there was a you know, little Italy crew um, and there was a little Italy right below it. So I was like, I'll just go to little Italy. 
And uh, it ended up not being a collection, but um, I'm just still going to hold out because Little Italy Chicago seems like a neighborhood that like someone just entering Upland in a couple of years would go, ooh, I want to get a place in Little Italy. And to I, me, I mean, there's I nothing wait. wrong with speculating on Mint. If that that yeah. mint is mint, so I mean, you win or you lose, but you you didn't really lose. Bingo. I'm never. I mean, I'm never gonna make less than what I paid for it. That's just not gonna happen. Nope. Even if you sell less, if you held it long enough, your your earnings could cover True. that. True. I didn't consider that. But you're absolutely right. If uh, in a, in a in a, in a uh, not worst case, but in a bad case scenario, yeah. No, you're absolutely yeah, right. But between send fees, everything else, like you make money off of that property. Like. Oh yeah. Um, but no, I, I, I'm very, uh, very much mint. Don't sell below mint, in my opinion, unless you absolutely have to. And I, I know that I see situations where people do, man, I am buying under mint every chance I get now. Um, I'm buying the old cities that I, I'm not, I, I have enough stuff or I have enough cities at this point that I'm invested in. I can't keep going deep into these new cities. Mm, I agree. That's, I that's will one. keep. I will have a presence in every city. I'm going to go get my token, you know, three properties. I was either going to get those little properties I got in downtown or I wasn't going to get any. Those mints were incredibly expensive. I didn't have enough. I would have lost out on my whole idea of buying uh, three named. So I wouldn't, if I didn't get what I got, I wouldn't have even bought those. Um, and that's kind of how I think I'm going to attack the newer cities, get the base collection and move on. I totally get that. Me personally, uh, well, I'm not getting any collections. I'm not. I'm not adding a single collection to my account until they remove those damn chips. I like looking at my block explorer. They're not taking that away from me. I, I will. I will avoid the earnings. I'm fine with that. I can wait. But That's, you know I, I like. It. I love your purist position on that, just because I know that it's something that they'll fix one day. And I, to me at least, I I know that I got a lot of collections swapped to me that I might not have that opportunity afforded to me in the future. That's I'm willing to eat my block explorer not mattering for the next year if that's what it means. No, I get that. Yeah, no, I totally get that. But as soon as I realized what was happening, I was like, wait a minute! Every time I fill in one of these things, you cover me up. Oh, no more. And that's how I see it. I'm paying to see my block explorer. It's like. It's like one of uh, uh one of my first apartments that I lived in, right? You know, you pay you pay your 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 damage deposit, right? And you you do everything you can to keep the apartment clean. You don't put you don't even put thumbtacks in the wall, and you just hope when you leave that you get your damage deposit back, right? Yep. I've never done that. Every single apartment I've ever lived in, I say nope. I see the damage deposit as paying to be able to live in my space. I don't. I don't ask for it back. I don't want it back. But I'm going to hang up every single painting, you know, poster that I want. I'm going to put every thumbtack in the wall that I want. I just take it as a sunk cost and don't worry about it. I I am very much the same. I don't know. Yeah, I I I do typically ask for it back because I don't feel like I usually leave it in a bad condition. But no, I don't really worry about it. Um, no, it is it is really bother. It does bother me though that there's a weird bizarre pers like there's a perverse negative incentive to not get collections like it shouldn't incentivize you to not get collections in any way like the I fact agree. that you feel the fact that you feel like you can't get them because it's going to ruin any part of your experience with the game that's that's a weird step it is i mean i acknowledge though that, that 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 is entirely my choice you know i'm choosing to lose out on what could be argued to be economic prosperity but uh but yeah no it's my choice um and i agree with you it's something they'll fix one day and honestly, the way I see it is that whenever they do fix that, um, I, I'd like to think I have enough goodwill with enough members of society that if uh, uh, collection swapping is not outlawed, um, that I could uh, take advantage of uh, some of those, uh, those bonuses and upics. And if not, well, that's just the way life works. What are you going to do? But New Orleans... It shouldn't be a choice that you have to make. Like, you shouldn't have to make that choice is all. Yeah, I mean, I agree. But it's just, you know, it's one of those things I'm not... Things in life worth stressing about, things in life worth not worth it, and you know no, damn that's well. Fair. The grand scheme of things, it is a very yep. minor issue, and I can see why Uplands kind of pushed that off. Yeah. And that's something, too, I think that people sometimes fail to take in and keep in perspective when they uh, uh, hound Upland about some of their progress they're making, about um, uh, how they reprioritize things. And it's like, you, you know, it's real easy to look at them, especially if you're in the Discord, and you're in the Discord a lot, and you see 
a, what you perceive as an absence of their interaction, it's really easy to think, like, well, they're just not invested in this because you don't see them there 24-7. But, like, number one, they have lives, too. I mean, like, they're going to take time off to go see a movie, and that's okay. <laughs> not, to, not to mention, not to say that all questions are, or any question is really invalid so much as questions that definitely don't need to be answered by a high-level dev or a high-level member of the team. Mm -hmm. That is attention diverted from what you want done anyway. Yeah. No, I think that the number one issue had been communication, and I think they realized that, they acknowledged that, they acknowledged that in a, in a very public way by coming onto the cafe. And since then, we have seen... I mean, I think, like, three new, like, public-facing community managers, maybe more. Um, I think that that situation has largely been dealt with. And so I think that people just need to realize that um, Upland's a long game. This Things are going to take time. They reprioritize things. But we are, we are no longer seeing the perceived pauses that we were afraid of. I mean, there was that time there where we were like, nothing but promises, nothing but promises, but c come on, I don't want any, I don't want another announcement until we see a delivery. I mean, how long have we been saying that, right? No, and that's where I feel like I, I, I am now getting to a spot where, like, they're delivering. Exactly. And they're delivering consistently, and they're cleaning up their backlog, and uh, and, and like you said, this is a long game, and as much as I could probably work on my patients, I, the community needs to understand that. Mm -hmm. Not only is this the cutting, like the bleeding edge of what is available right now, they're creating a new space and a new tech, mm -hmm. um, which God knows the effort and everything that goes into that. Um, mm -hmm. This isn't like normal crypto stuff. This isn't nope. move, in a, move it in a day. This isn't you bought a $60 game for the PS4 and it's completed. This is going to be much more akin to Second Life or anything of the sort than it is anything else that we have. And five to ten year timelines on a lot, some things, obviously not everything, but on a lot of things is not, is the way that I think people need to be looking at this. Yeah, I agree. There, there is a version of day trading in Upland. Um, it's a core part of the game. It's Monopoly. But I would argue that it is a... Um, relatively small part of the game. It's, it's not a majority part of the game. It is a minority part of the game. And frankly, without the databases, it's even more of a minority part. I mean, how, how have you been able to really... How, what's your game been like without up to it? I love it. I hope up to it never comes back. <laughs> Interesting perspective. Go on. So I, it takes time, and it is, it is um, consuming. Um, I don't involve myself in these new treasure hunts for Spark. But I comb these cities, and what I've really been doing is investing in the future of structures. People, uh, there's a graph that'll give you the breakdown of basically what you want to, however you want to break it down. Structures have a value, and based on like what the current spark leasing is for the most part, um, forty for basically forty for a small townhouse, forty five for a um, a ranch. Uh, 108 for a regular townhouse, 125 for a lux, and I think roughly 240 for an apartment. Now I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to make sure I understand what you're saying. So you're saying mm -hmm. that because of the 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 cost we we have black and white, like the cost we have associated with Spark and the Spark hours of building a structure, you are saying that that those the, for the 40 was 40,000 upix. That's how much the structure adds in value to the property it's on in i mean to be fair this is my opinion but this i think is starting to become some somewhat of a consensus um and if anything it should be valued more when you consider um time um effort etc but that would be the baseline value okay um wait wait including the property mint or uh, i'm assuming exact, adding to it oh, ah see that's the key is that people uh you should be valuing it at whatever it's market is at least mint at least mint but whatever its market is plus the structure in my opinion because mm -hmm. the structure only adds it's not detracting i agree um, but people are selling for whatever reason there's probably numerous reasons structures under what their structure value is now i get that these values are above its property value so it is speculation mm -hmm. but i i bought a townhouse for 40 dollars. that i see what you're saying that cost $108 plus another, I think it was like $8 mint. 
I extracted, in my opinion, over seventy dollars of value just it was just left on the table. I see what you're saying. Okay, because you're, you're basing getting... that based on just the pure. Va- the, you're saying the just the value of the structure alone, regardless of the mint, is worth the price that they offered. Or, yep, and I dropped yeah. a I dropped a little graphic in the chat too. Yeah, I see um, that. That's what I'm looking at. Yeah. So to me, if I can get a structure like I, I'm buying townhouses seventy, eighty dollars all the time, and then mm-hmm. I'm getting the value in the structure, and I'm getting the property for free. And a lot of these are in older cities too, which are a little undervalued at the moment due to the state of the market, but they're in older cities because that's where people have had time to build. So yes. I'm getting a lot of Oaklands, a lot of Fresnos. I'm getting a lot of what I see to be valuable property for literally less than free. Now, this is fascinating. This is fascinating. So I suppose that in this <clears throat> in this scenario for you, Really, the only risk factor would be Upland flooding the market with properties. As long as they keep that supply and demand in check, it will keep the the demand for uh, structures in check as well um, once we have the residential addresses. Actually, to me, I don't care. I mean, not I don't want them to flood the value, like with too much property, but in my opinion, as long as we start to see a reduced residual or monthly and we move towards um, rents and stuff like that, I really don't care how many properties they are. They still need a structure. Yeah. Okay. If I guess. I guess flooding the market with Spark would be the issue if they did that. Yes. No, and that you. has that. That is the, that. It does throw a wrench in my plans potentially, depending on how the Spark um exchange goes. Mm-hmm. But I I don't see them trying to unhealthily undercut the current market. I could be wrong. I don't, and I don't know how we, we don't know how that's going to break down. So I can only play with the information I have today. And based on that, I am buying and I am not shy. I am buying as much as I can of these. So I've actually, I've gotten like 20 structures at this point. I've only probably finished three of my own. Right on. Um, speaking of spark though. So where, what do you, what are you hoping in terms of the spark sales? Uh, and like, their frequency and um, length, like 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 overall life, and like do you would you like to see them keep happening like they're happening um, at the rate they're going? Would you like to see them slow down? Would you like to see them keep it just this way for a year and then then slow down? Because I know some I, people are concerned. I I obviously don't want to see Spark added to the to the total at, at infinitum, but. As long as we have cities as well, I mean, as much as you could say, like, yeah, like the spark's going to be devalued, like the more cities you have, the more properties need to be built, the more, the more spread out it is, the more sparks going to go up. So I could see, like, I, we've heard different numbers um, as to what we'll see as a total number. As long as we're under 100,000 for quite some time, I'm not concerned. I'm going to actually, I agree with you, first of all, 100%, but I'm going to uh, throw another thing in there. Right now, we only use spark to build structures right exactly Um, and that's the that's the other side of that exactly eventually we're gonna be whenever whenever we're able whenever we're building the outside decor whenever we you know whenever i'm able to build my damn gazebo i'm gonna be building it with spark cars will be built with spark Um, of course they will yeah exactly anything like that's gonna be so so the whole so there that's gonna be a whole other element so yeah i agree i'm not too concerned about that and also i like the frequency they're doing it just for incoming players the only thing i would like to see is some sort of system implemented at some point to favor newer players who haven't had a good chance to get spark yet there is speculation and i I don't think there's any concrete numbers and it depends on how much you trust the source some of the top um spark hunters or treasure hunters right now do somewhat believe that it is kind of geared towards the um uplanders and pros versus directors and execs you're talking the, the, the just the treasures though yes but i yes. mean that's a huge thing for new players that is i well mm, it, with except for except for the send mechanic like we treasure hunting just, to <sighs> me i you don't need that many. I mean, definitely to do it like some of these guys are doing it. They they've created a whole another system out of it that I don't even know that Upland intended. Maybe they did, <laughs> but they've created a whole system out of it where they can just go at it infinitely. Um, but I was able to back in the day and even now go around San Francisco a good amount of times. You know, with just a few properties, fairly successfully. Um, yeah, there's a limit because I don't have a whole web. But if you're in a smaller city, especially, or in a well-designed, like, 
kind of small enough city, like, um, you can get enough that it would matter still. Maybe, I mean, obviously we can argue as to what, like, like how fair it is, but it, it still, I think it would matter. You don't yeah. have to be a huge player to get into the game. I guess. And that is an important element, making sure that it's a fair playing field uh, when you're talking about the actual in-game mechanic. I guess uh, I'm also just saying for the people that don't have the time to do treasure hunting but have been in the game for, like, let's say, you know, a few weeks or whatnot, I don't know, it'd be nice to make sure that people who are at that, like, just got pro level, can you know, on the fence about how much they're really going to put into the game, it'd be nice to know that they can, like, get half a spark, you know, if they're willing to pay for it. Um, to me, to me, in the way I'm looking at it, I am doing. I've done the math out, and yeah, you can. You got to start to look at like the upics earned if you're getting like good chests and stuff like that. But that's tough calculation and all luck. So the way I'm looking at it is the amount of spark you're earning. It's good, hmm. but I can out earn what spark you're doing with the sales I'm getting right now in undervalued properties across the metaverse. Hmm. I can take the time that you're putting into that, use half or a quarter of it, and then sell these properties uh, even cheaper than what the market should be still take that profit and put it into spark so i there's multiple ways to get to the same place i see your thing as long as you have in your spot as long as you have the spark to get construction started there you you can you can get it finished is a good way to i think to put it yeah or not <clears throat> even that like you could even use it to because i mean you can us dollar now where i could buy a property I'm getting some of these old cities so cheap that I could buy it, sell it at USD at Mint or just under Mint, and then I have that in my bank. The next Spark sale comes around, boom. I, I, I bought Spark, and I didn't have to go and play that game. You're yeah. right. You could well, rent it, it, too. It, if, you were, it, that's if you got the, the, in the queue to be able to get the Spark, that's part of what I'm saying. Is, is I, I know that some people – like I know that I have gotten – have been able – Every single Spark sale that I've signed up for, basically, I've been able to get exactly what I want. And yeah, so we'll get to a point. Yeah, no, we'll get to a point with that where that's going to get weird. But as of right now, I can say with 100% confidence, every Spark sale, I could have at least walked away with a quarter and I wasn't even paying attention to the other two. Now, is that just that there aren't that many people interested? Because I feel like I've seen people that have lamented not getting any. Yeah, I, I got to admit, I, I think some of them are just full of it, bro. Maybe, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you're right. I, there, there, was a, there was a quarter spark sale uh, in the last one that went on for hours and hours and hours after. Hours and hours and hours. Well, all right, like, then. I guess then uh, I get to take back everything I said. Apparently, it is completely fair. Everyone should be... <laughs> we're, we're good. Well, so I will say that it, the, the demand's going to increase, and to get the best value, because it does get more expensive as you get the smaller amount, um, mm -hmm. which is... I don't know Not if that's by fair. that much, though. No, you're right. But it is – so to get the best value, I will say that yeah. the full spark and sometimes the half spark can sell out. I have not had a situation where I couldn't at least walk away from a spark sale with a quarter spark yet. That's fair. That's fair. And I guess to that end, um, I guess really – uh, I need to say uh, to the people that are just involved in, and, and are just looking to you know make some money in this game long term, like invest in Spark, like get, get, get yourself enough Spark to get some stuff started. Because if you play a long game, then just get yourself some properties and also add some structures to them. Like there's going to be so much cool stuff we can do later on. And now that they have that $18 million, they were talking about being able to hire more staff. And all I'm seeing there is I'm like, cars, we'll get our fucking cars. That's what I'm hoping from that. I'm hoping that we get cars from that. Do you have a spark number that you are comfortable with? You mean, that, or that you, are, that you are working towards? I already got it. Five. Okay. Actually, so, technically I have 5.01, but five is what I wanted. Five is what I got. So I'm at, I haven't bought any yet. Um, and it's, I, it's tough because I got lucky enough to get dropped a bunch from being here forever. So like, the first few go arounds, I'm like, why would I buy it? I have so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sitting on five and a, and a half, basically. But now I'm hearing players talk about, well, why wouldn't I not get enough to be able to max a apartment building? I want mm -hmm. 30. And I'm like, whoa, I didn't even think numbers that guy. I really, I didn't even think players were thinking numbers that high. And it's me. I don't know that I need 30, but it's, it's reset my floor to a base of 10. That's entirely fair. And that's where you really have to, and that's, 
that's exactly where you need to just look at what your plans are in the like one year, five year, ten year realm. You know, like is is there a max? For some people, there isn't a max. For some people, though, that they have the income and they have it um, on a perpetual enough basis that they can say, no, I will buy one spark at every sale until there are no more sales. But then I mean, there's, I'll oh, go ahead. Yeah. No, that's it. Yeah, but then there's people that they, they are have to be like, well, no, I gotta stop at thirty. I gotta stop at fifty. I can't. I can't. I can't justify having spent more than twenty five thousand dollars on this. At at a certain point, though, like if as long as you're not, you know, you're liquid and you're not, you know, taken away from your rent, I kind of got to agree with the spark maximalists. Like if you look at it, I think that le- even just leasing it out, it, mm-hmm. it's like at a, like what fourteen, fifteen month uh, ROI. Mm-hmm. I mean, no, I that's you. incredible. That's incredible. Like I, I, I don't see at this point in the game, I don't see a downfall to having as much as you can possibly get your hands on. Well, let's look at it this way. Let's say, let's say it's only Upland that you're considering putting this money into this four hundred and sixty dollars. Okay, if it's only Upland you're considering it putting into at the rate of the sales, is there anything else in Upland you could put that money into that you would be able to get either a faster or more lucrative return on investment? Um. I mean, obviously, it depends on how you want to play the prop flip game, but just that that perpetual, like, you get it back in 14 months, and then you have that for, I don't know, how many years you want to say you're in this game? Like, that's that's big. Well, that's and where it, for... It, oh, go ahead. Oh, and I was going to say, like, I mean, it's definitely not necessarily as fast as some of the money out there, but... And you could out-earn it. You could. But how... Like eventually, property flipping is going to stop. I've, I don't know when. No one does, but eventually, you're not. We're going to run out of properties. Um, and the game's going to run on Spark. I, yeah, property flipping is never going to completely stop. Um, but it is going to eventually reach a point where it is closer to how it is in the real world. Right now, we are all just playing like we're just we're playing like like we're not kids in the '90s playing Pogs. We're just flipping them over all you know all, all over the place. But eventually, it really is going to be like someone looking for a new house in a nice neighborhood, and so they'll make an offer, and that that is eventually where we will move to. You're absolutely right. Um, but regarding uh uh, oh, what was um? Now I lost my train of thought. Anyway, um, I mean, there's gotta uh, be. Uh, no, oh, no, I got it. I got it. I got it. Sorry. Uh, uh, regarding the spark sale, sorry, uh, no, what I was gonna say was, um, I think what we're gonna see regarding that is you have the sp- the, the spark maximalists. And you're absolutely right. The people who can afford to just keep doing that on top of anything else, and it's not really a question, yeah, they'll keep doing that. But I think what's going to happen, what you have to, uh, is a lot of people don't have that much money, and they tend to put um, the spark sales relatively close to city releases. And so you got a lot of people being like, do I go in on the city, or do I go in on the spark? And where do you stand on that? I mean... So that is, that's fair, and I think it, you just got to look at what you want to do in-game. Um, where I'm currently at, I'm sitting at just shy of 700 properties across every city in this game. Um, I got too much, honestly. I need to <laughs> shrink my portfolio, not grow it. Um, I'm going to be getting out of some of my smaller properties into more major properties in the cities that I'm already in, kind of develop planning. Um, I don't know what that number is. Maybe somebody feels they could develop more. Um, but whatever your number is... You definitely need to hit a property number two. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't know. I, I'm I'm at I've kind of hit my wall at this point where I'm at I think like six seventy properties something like that, and I don't know what I'm gonna do with all of that, let alone more. That's fair. Yeah. No. I uh, and as far as Spark is concerned, I just I reached the point where I saw how fast I could build a house, and I said, "All right, yeah, that's fast enough for me." Um, that's kind of just how I landed on it. Um, but maybe, you know, I, I don't, I, I don't always think about the secondary market and how that's going to change, but Hey, we'll see. I, uh, am excited to see what we get from future legits. Now with the playoffs, like let's, like, let's say we get the, the actual implementation by the playoffs and for the Super Bowl and everything, you know how we're getting, uh, they, they had mentioned the idea of like live music legits. Yeah. What if the halftime show has a legit? I think that they're going to probably throw a lot of legits at a lot of things and maybe we don't see repeats of some of them, you know, some of them are just going to be what throw it at the wall and see what sticks, but why not? I mean, if, if it doesn't become this big thing, it was a one-time thing and 
you really can't lose at least you know trying a bunch of these i don't think nope i, I, agree. I, I mean there's, there's some sort of wine and i kind of feel like that with these stupid spirit legits but some people like them you know no yeah it it I don't understand how what possible functionality the cards could possibly have, um, but the block explorers and the ornaments uh, have intrinsic value. They are just they are what they are. They are block explorers and they are ornaments. But you can decorate with them. You can make them your block explorer. So I'm happy with the spirit legits for them. Um, I don't really care about yeah. the cards. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm with you. The the decorations super cool. Block explorers always cool. Um. I just it, and it comes back to it's not even that I hate the legits because it's just another collectible. There's all sorts of those. It's that you named it a legit after the PA legits, which was the only mm -hmm. example we had. Of, and I know we discussed that before. Mm -hmm. And that's really my contention is like, what are we defining legits as? Are we I, going to add function to these things or is legits just anything Upland makes? That's exactly what I've been asking for weeks now. Like, what is legit then? So I don't know. I don't, I still am not, I, apparently a legit is just Upland's platform for NFTs, whatever those individual projects end up being. So, yeah, I don't know, because I'm with you. To, to me, it felt like, like, I remember being a kid and having Pokemon cards that you could use, you know, for the Pokemon game. And then one, one day for like, uh, I don't know, Christmas or something, I got a pack of Pokemon cards, but they were just like, like, knockoff Pokemon cards. Like, they were just like pictures of the Pokemon on one side. And I remember being like, "This, this isn't, this isn't what you said." That's kind of oh, how I, I feel about, about that. These. Was the, that, that was the tops one. Tops yeah. tried to get, they tried to get their hand in that. Yep. Yeah, and that's how kind of how I feel about the the spirit legits. I'm just like, all right, you gave me this. I don't know what to do with it. it it's looks a weird hang up that I, I like. Heavy. I feel almost petty, like petty, getting hung up on. But like, yeah. the, the, I feel like defining things matters. But that's a perfect thing where it does it, – it, 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 there's no closed doors. There's nothing but open doors for possible future functionality. Who knows? Maybe next year, um, if you uh, burn three of, the, uh, three of those from this year, you get, <clears throat> you get a free ornament or something. And I have heard things like that where like we're, we're going to be able to burn a lot of these, especially like the uncannies and the ones that there's a bunch of. And you know what? If we add that, I'm, I'm right back in. I'm right back right. in. right. And I mean, who knows? We'll just have to see. But I'm hopeful, and we'll just see how it goes. Um, I don't really have uh, anything else in Upland. Uh, I, I, is there anything else going on? Any other challenges? Um, to my knowledge, not, not at the moment. Um, yeah, just buy the old cities. And uh, anybody who's listening, I dropped a... Uh, in, in our chat there's a undervalued prop right now if you want an example don't have to buy yeah. it but uh somebody's selling it i figure you, i can't buy them all so i, I try to share i right. see it's, it's also for sale for fiat yes so i mean that is i mean i'm not finding the disparity as much in Upix. i will like i found a full townhouse in oakland 78k which is still a disparity in my opinion um by a good amount but the disparity is much greater in USD. It's that's where the real arbitrage is. No, I could totally see that, and that's just. But it's also barrier entry for a lot of people that that have managed to be mostly free to play. So it is what it is. I mean, they have to then sell themselves for the cash to make it to buy it. So it becomes a competitive market. Um, let's see here. Yeah. All right. Well. I think that's uh, all I've got. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, say that's probably going to be it for this week. I'm going to go have some dinner. Um, it was good talking to you, Cam. And uh, I will see you in Upland, and I will see you all later. Have a good night. Enjoy your dinner, man. I will. See you later.